There's a fascinating Gemara that relates to the burial of Yaakov Avinu. When the tribes and the families had brought Yaakov Avinu to Hebron to be buried in the cave of Machpelah, Esav was there and he contested the right of Yaakov Avinu to actually be buried in that spot. He felt that he was actually entitled to the remaining uh, location. The sons of Yaakov said, well, there was a deed of sale which acknowledged that in actual fact you, Esav, had sold that plot to your brother Yaakov. The problem was they didn't have the document with them. They'd left it back home in Egypt. Naphtali was a very light-footed individual, and therefore they got him to run back. It tells us, fascinatingly, the Gemara says that one of the grandsons, Chushim, was slightly deaf, and he couldn't hear all of the arguments going back and forth as to why it was that Yaakov Avinu should be buried, and all he could see was that his grandfather Yaakov was lying there in state, which certainly was not considered an act of honor. And when he inquired as to what, why that was the case, and he was informed because Asaph was contesting, he immediately went and took the matters into his own hand, and essentially got rid of Asaph, and they were able to bury Yaakov. So the question is asked, that why was it that the brothers were didn't seem to have the same passion as the grandson? Why was it that they didn't also take action into their own hands? They had this whole back and forth, deliberating, arguing, proving that you sold it, etc., until finally Naphtali has to run back uh, to Egypt. Why was it only Chushim that had that sensitivity? And I saw an answer which said that it's not that they didn't have that sensitivity, but in deliberating about it with Aesop at such length, they had become, in a sense, uh, used to this, the, the situation. They had become, made peace almost with the fact that Yaakov Avinu was going to have to lie there until such time as this matter was resolved. They got so caught up in everything that was going on that they just accepted the situation. Choshimayim, not aware of everything else that was going on, just has that initial sense of indignation, of righteous indignation. How can it be that his grandfather is being treated in this manner? And therefore, because he didn't have that opportunity to go through the deliberations and essentially make a peace with his situation, when he finds out what's it about, he immediately takes action into his own hands. And what this highlights is that in life, all too often, we can get so caught up in all of the discussions and the deliberations that we can actually end up reaching a point where we take things that we should be upset about and we just accept it. As we go into this new year, and as I wrote in the partial thought, we have to be careful not to take what we have unfortunately been forced to experience over the past uh, nine months and take that as a given. Grandparents not having the opportunity to really embrace their grandchildren or to have their grandchildren over at the home, because obviously grandparents are more vulnerable. These are the kind of things that almost have been washed away from our normal life activities. And because it's been so long, because we've heard all of the discussions and deliberations about health, etc., we run the risk of making peace with that situation. We run the risk, at the very least, of not retaining that sense of, of loss. And there I said the same is true also with regards to Schulz as I wrote. That we kind of just like Schulz no longer part of the lexicon until who knows when. And we can ill afford. We can ill afford to allow that kind of complacency, that kind of making peace with a very bad situation to infiltrate into our lives. We need to yearn for it. We need to pine for it to, to be reunited with friends, to be reunited with family. Hopefully, we can only pray, and we can hope, that 2021, although it started off difficult, will ultimately end off a lot better than 2020. By all accounts, 2020 started off wonderful, but boy, what a year it was. So please God, the reverse will also be true. 2021 has started off tough, and please God, it will be the most wonderful and best year for all of us, for all of you, and for your families. I actually do wish you a happy new year. Shana Tomah.